done for you, who he has been for you. If, even if you can't think, you might be in a storm right now, but God is still God. He's still good. He's still going to do what he does, but there is a process. And even in that process, he's still who he is. And that's God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Great are you, Lord. He's great in all of his ways. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands in this place. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. You give us everything that we need and more. And there is none like him. Hallelujah. He is good, y'all. How many of you got a reason to praise him today? I do. I do. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, we love you, we love you, Lord. Thank you, God. Oh, yes, we bless you. True and living God, that's who he is. Thank you, Lord. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that's broken. Thank you, Jesus. And great are you, Lord. Because it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out. Give him back what he's given you. Hallelujah. Give life.
so kind and merciful. Great are you, Lord. Oh, great are you, Lord. Yeah. Great are you, Lord. Holy one, holy one. Holy great. Great are you, Lord. Come on. Let's hear you all singing. Come on, say, great are you, Lord above your circumstances. Great are you, Lord. Any sickness in your body, sing that above that. Sing, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Come on, sing it. Great are you, Lord. No matter what I'm going through, you're still great. Great are you, No matter what we experience, he's still Rest in your power, sing great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and praise him. It's prayer time. It's prayer time in the house. If you are online, you're watching online, it's time to pray. I want you to come and put your hands in the hands of these prayer warriors. They've been fasting and praying. I want you to come believing God this morning. I want you to come even if you feel like you're not worthy to come. We serve a God who answers us when we call. We serve a God who hears us when we call upon his great name. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of the story of the prophet Jonah. Jonah is an example of God hearing us from anywhere where we call upon him. The Bible says that God assigned Jonah an assignment, an assignment that he did not want to do. And so the Bible said that Jonah ran in the opposite way. He ran away from God. And when he ran away from God, it caused a storm to come upon the sea. There was a great storm that came. And even after the storm, God, uh, 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 they threw Jonah overboard. And God had prepared a great fish, a well, that swallowed him up. And the Bible declares that out of the belly of the well, Jonah called and cried out to God. Even in his place of rebellion, even in the place where he had run the opposite way of God. And the Bible says that God heard him and he delivered him and he answered him. So even where you are this morning, the Bible declares that the righteous cry out. And God delivers them out of all of their troubles. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father, in the name, Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning, God. We call on your great name, God. We thank you, God, that you are a God that hears us when we pray. You are a God that bends in your ear to us, God, when we cry out, God. You hear the cries of your people, God. So this morning, oh God, we come, oh God, boldly to the throne of grace. We sit at your feet, God. We lean into your presence. We lean into your goodness. God, we sit at your feet, God, and we throw our problems in front of you, God. We cast our cares in front of you, God, for we know you care for us, oh God. So Father, in the mighty name of Jesus,
the breath of God in your lungs. If he woke you up this morning and your legs can still carry you and your heart is still beating, the Bible says, bless the Lord at all times and his praise yes. shall yes, be in yes, my yes, mouth. Yes, Come on. His praise shall be in my mouth. His praise. Take the next 30 seconds and let his praise be in your mouth. Come on. Let his praise be in your mouth. If he woke you up, let his praise be in your mouth. Just in case you are online or you are in the house and you don't know what to do with this type of atmosphere. The Bible says put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And some of you came here with a different garment. But some of us came with a garment of praise. I don't know how many people came with a garment of praise. Look at your neighbor and tell them, are you dressed for service? Look at your neighbor and tell them, are you dressed for service? What type of garment do you have on? Some of us have a garment of praise. If you have a garment of praise, open your mouth, lose your mind, raise a song, raise a shout, and give Jesus the biggest praise. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Look at the other neighbor and tell them, are you ready? God is about to do something in your life. If you are online, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Wherever you are, God is about to do something. God is about to do something. Something is about to happen. I can feel it. I can sense it. Something. Somebody shout here. Jesus the biggest shout in the house. No, no, no. Give Jesus the biggest shout. I said, Jesus, give Jesus the biggest shout. Give Jesus the biggest shout. be seated hallelujah look at your neighbor and tell them I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord amen well if you are online and if this is the first time of joining us in the lighthouse experience you are online or you are in house want to welcome you if this is your first time in person in a lighthouse experience, wherever you are, just lift up your hands. Let us know. Let us welcome you. We have one person there. Come on. Make them feel welcome. And if this is your first time of joining us online, I want to let you know that you are in the right place. God has a word for you. And on behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Kian Henderson, I welcome you. This is the lighthouse that you have been waiting for and you have been hearing about. And we have been waiting for you. Now, very quickly something about the lighthouse church that i want you to know is that we do everything on purpose 
everything we do in the lighthouse is very intentional. And we have what we call our five A's, wherever you are, our five A's. Our five A's are anticipation. That is what, you, that is what you're experiencing now. We anticipate the move of God in every experience. We also have the atmosphere. That's the presence of God you feel in the house. We have acceptance. Wherever you are, whoever you are, we know our job is not to change you. Our job is to love you. God does the changing. We do the loving. Come on. I said God does the changing and we do the love. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you're from. We accept you. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. Not the church, but the world that he gave his only begotten son. So somebody say acceptance. And we are authentic about everything we do. That's who we are. The Bible says God is looking for real worshipers. Those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's why we jump and shout. So, so if you are sitting beside someone that is jumping and shouting, you have permission to leave. They are not going to leave. You are going to leave. Because we are th we're true to what we do. We worship God in spirit and in truth. And of course, we're a church of action. Everybody say action. So that is our five A's. Anticipation, atmosphere, acceptance, authenticity, and action. That is what we are all about. Our senior pastor, Pastor Kian Henderson, has decreed that this is our year of what? No, no, no. Now, if you know you have been manifesting some promises, I wanted to say it like you made it. This is our year of what? This is our year of manifested promises. If this is your first time you're joining us online or you are in the house, this is our year. The Bible says that God will do exceeding abundantly beyond all we can ever ask, think, or imagine. And this is our month of perspective. Somebody say perspective. And someone might ask the pastor, what is the scripture for perspective? I'm glad you asked. Genesis 13, 15. The Bible says, for all the land which you see, I will give to you. I believe in this season, in this month, God says, if you can see it, God says, I'm going to give it to you. Look at your neighbor and tell them, can you see it? Can you see it? No, you are sitting beside the wrong neighbor. Look at the other neighbor and tell them, can you see it? Can you see it? If you are online, just leave it in the chat, Lighthouse Nation, and say, I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. Amen. Amen. So I want us to make a declaration, if you believe that. And everybody, repeat after me. This is my year of manifested promises. Come on, I want you to say it like you mean it. Say, this is my year of manifested promises. I have the right perspective. And it will not end. Come on, put a praise in it. Come on. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. We have the Lighthouse University. We're going to have the in-person um, educational classes continuing in person. And we're going to be having it April 26th. It's going to be in every location. Not just here at Lighthouse South. It's going to be at Lighthouse West. It's going to be at Lighthouse North. It's going to be in all the different locations. And of course... If you are a parent, a guide, or a caregiver of someone with autism, we would like you to join the Lighthouse Church Autism Support Group, which is called Living Optimistic on Purpose, the loop. You can scan the QR code there, and you're going to get all the information you need. Next Sunday, everybody say next Sunday. Next Sunday, next Sunday we're going to be at the North Campus, and service is going to start by 10 a.m. Listen. We've partnered with Love Has No Limits organization to serve this, the city of Houston. We talked about action. And action is one of the things that we do here. And we've partnered with that outreach. And it's, it's an outreach event called One Day Houston. We're going to have 50,000 volunteers will come together. We're going to be loving the city of Houston. We're going to be serving families. Come on, put your hands together. 50,000 volunteers. And we are raising together, we're rising together to serve the city of Houston. And we we'll want you to be a part of what God is doing. The location is going to be at the North Campus. That is 6650 Ranking Road. And you can text LH Volunteer to 84576 to get all the information you want. 
love has no limits. Look at your neighbor and tell them love has no limits. Come on, look at your other neighbor. Tell them love has no limits. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. We're going to take our communion. This is the part of service that I want us to stand up to do because this is symbolic of the bread, uh, symbolic of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ that was shared and broken for us. You know, Pastor Keon always says that every other blood stains. And I don't know about you, do you have some things in your life that has stained your life? Stained your memory? Stained your childhood? But every other blood stains. But the blood of Jesus washes. My, my daughter had my daughter had an she, my, my daughter had a cut. And she showed me this morning and yesterday. She's like, Daddy, I had a cut. And it was bleeding. And it stained her clothes. And every other blood stains. And if you're online, I need you to understand that it doesn't matter what has stained your life. It doesn't matter what has stained your life. It doesn't matter what has stained your mind. It doesn't matter what has stained your childhood. I have a solution for you. The blood of Jesus washes every stain. Come on. I'm not talking about it. I said the blood of Jesus washes every stain. Thank you, Lord. That's the blood that gives us strength. Come on, can you sing it a little bit? So some of you are looking for power without knowing you are eating power into your life. The Bible says the blood will never lose its power. When you leave here, Wherever you are watching this, understand that you are—you have the power on your inside. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Woo! Sing it. Understand you're not just drinking anything, you are drinking power. Somebody shout power. Wherever the blood flows means that there has been a cut, which means there is now access. Somebody say access. But never lose its power. As you drink, I declare.
decree and declare access to everything that you've been struggling to get. And God is going to shut the door of the things that have been hunting you and open the door to a new season of blessings and breakthrough. Open up and I want you to drink. Drink all of it. Come on, sing it. Hey.
already done. The devil is alive. My brother, I w- we were called, um, he works all over this United States, and we were called to Ohio the day after Monday. We were in rehearsal, I got a call Tuesday, saying that my brother was in the hospital. Now all of our family are th- were other places, right? So I'm like, oh, we don't know what's going on. They wouldn't give us any information because he had no family there. So fly out, get there, and my brother's in ICU. Three days. He went into DKA. DKA. I don't know if you don't know what that is. Diabetes. Okay. And we didn't know that he was sick, but we have been praying, y'all. And there is strength and there is power in prayer. Hallelujah. There is power in prayer. When I tell you, he spent three days in ICU, and my mother told me she said, "Pray over him and lay hands on him." And we're getting ready to make this declaration again that the devil is a liar and God is exalted. Because as I was praying for him, hallelujah, I could, I could see in him that he was gaining his strength. And it just wasn't because of me, obviously. It's all of the prayers. But it just to, goes to show you that there is nothing impossible for him. Nothing, no manner of illness, no manner of disease can exalt itself against the blood of Jesus. That's why we took this blood up here, because that's where the power is, y'all. So we get ready to declare this. Whatever it is that you're dealing with in your life, it may be physical, it may be mental, it may be emotional. But let me tell you something. There is power in your words. Speak over yourself. You're not going to be able to call on a pastor all the time. You may not even be able to call on your mother. But God gave you power in your mouth, power in your mouth to speak, denounce, insult, whatever it is. So the devil is a liar. Say, the devil is a liar.
And we will never, we shall never, we shall never, we shall never, we shall never, never is concrete. That means that there's no possibility that we will ever be defeated. We shall never, we shall never, we shall never, never be defeated, never be defeated. Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. If Hallelujah. you believe that God is the greatest, Hallelujah. then give him a great praise. Hallelujah. Come on, Lighthouse, wherever you are, online in the house, Thank if you Lord. know that God is the greatest and all power belongs to him, Hallelujah. open up your mouth and give him the greatest shout. A big God deserves a big praise. A great God deserves a great praise. The Lord is great and greatly to the praise. Open up your mouth for the next 10 seconds and give him a great praise in the house. Come on, Lighthouse. And I want you to say that again. Say, thank you, Jesus. Then underneath your breath, I want to say, welcome, Holy Spirit. Have your way in this place. We decree and declare that you are the greatest. The greatest. You are God over cancer. You are God over diabetes. You are God over stroke. You are God over COVID. You are God over... You were God over autism. You were God over whatever it is. You were God over. And you have all power in your hands. My father is powerful. My daddy is powerful. He loves me and he's powerful. Thank you, Lord, because you are the greatest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. While you are standing, I want you to just put your hands together and celebrate the gift of God in the person of Pastor Kian Henderson and Lady Shani. Come on, let them feel welcome. Let them feel the honor that they deserve. Come on, you can do better than that. You don't honor people just in their presence. You honor people in their absence. And if you are online, I want you to just leave it in the chat. Let Pastor Kian know how much we love him and how much of a blessing he is to the body of Christ. Amen. Do you know your pastor is blessed? Yes. You know God has sent us a gift in the person of Pastor Kian? If you know that, come on, put your hands together and honor and celebrate that gift. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm just honored to, to have a front row seat to see what God is doing through, and through his life. If you have your Bible, I have an assignment by the Holy Spirit.
I'm going to be reading from the book of Numbers. I'm going to use the New King James Version. Numbers 13. A couple of verses there. This, just to give you some background and context. This was when Moses sent out men to spy the land of Canaan, the promised land. And we're going to read, we're going to skip through a couple of verses. I'm going to be moving with you guys. And um, we're going to jump through with different verses today. So the Bible says, and the Lord spoke to Moses. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, send men to spy out the land of Canaan. Which I am giving the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, everyone a leader among them. And Moses sent them to the wilderness of Paran, according to the word of the Lord. And all the men who are heads of the children of Israel. Let's skip over to verse 17. Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and he said to them go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like listen listen I want you to pay attention to every word I know you probably have heard this in Sunday school and you know the story but just look at it through a different lens verse 18 says and, and see what the land is like whether the people who dwell and eat are strong or what? Thank you. Or weak. Whether they are few or many. Verse 19. Whether the land they dwell in is good or, or bad. Whether the cities are a stronghold. Whether the land is rich or poor. Look at that. He said something. He says, and bring back some fruit. Of the land. Verse 23. Let's skip over to verse 23. Then they came to the valley of Eshcol. And they cut down. Watch this. They cut down the branch with one. Everybody say one. One cluster of grapes. But it was so heavy. That's my own version right. It was so heavy. That they had to carry it between two men. They brought a pole. And just I wanted to just picture it. They had two men. And they had to carry it on a pole. That's how heavy the grapes were. I'm not talking about Costco-sized grapes. No, no, no. I'm talking about promised land-sized grapes. Some of you are used to Costco-sized. God is about to elevate you. <laughs> and they brought some of the pomegranate and the, and the figs. So let's skip over to, to verse 27. When they brought back their report, this is what they said. And say, they, then they, they told him, we went to the land you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is the fruit. Somebody said the fruit. <laughs> Nevertheless, this is where they missed it. The people who dwell in the land are strong. Nobody asked you that. The cities are fortified and very large. And moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak. The descendants of Anak are the giants. Somebody say giants. And they kept talking about all the Jebusites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and all the ites. And I'm like Caleb in verse 30. I don't know if you're like Caleb. I'm like Caleb. Then Caleb told them to shut up. That's my version. Shut your mouth up. He quietened the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. I don't know. Where is my Caleb section in the house? Where, where are the Caleb's and the Joshua's? They say, I don't care about this spy mission, this reconnaissance. I don't care about this. Let us go up and possess. For we are well able. Somebody say, I'm able. I'm able. Come on. We just sang the last few minutes. We sang God is the greatest and he has all power. And guess where God lives in? He lives in you. Somebody say, I am well able to overcome it. Watch these people, verse 31. But the man who went with them says, no, 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 no. We are not able to go up against them. 
for they are stronger than us. This is where the robber meets the road, verse 33. They looked at them and saw them as giants. And they say, there, were, there we saw giants, which are the descendants of Anak. And we, watch this, watch this, mark this. We were like grasshopper in our sight, period. That's enough. But they went on to say, and so they were. So we were in their sight. It's one thing for you to see yourself as a grasshopper. It's another thing for you to think that other people see you as a grasshopper. I sense the power of the Holy Ghost in this place. Father, we ask for the anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. I bind every spirit of heaviness. Every spirit that is negative. And I ask that you move from center to circumference. And fill this place with your glory. At the end of the day. This is my heart's desire. Holy Spirit have your way in this place. Anything I've desired to say that you don't want me to say. Take it out. Delete it from my memory. And anything you want me to say that I didn't prepare to say. Put it in. Let Jesus be glorified. Let the believers be edified. And let the enemy be so terrified. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Come on say amen. For the next few minutes I'm going to preach on the subject. That says. Don't choke on the grapes. Look at your neighbor and tell them don't choke on the grapes. If you are in transition and you are not where you used to be, but you're not yet where you want to be. And if you are pressured to settle for less, then this message is for you. Can you look at your neighbor and tell them, don't choke on the grapes. Don't choke on the grapes. This is your, this is your five seconds to do a pew check to see if you are seated beside the, the right neighbor or the wrong neighbor. If you are seated beside the wrong neighbor, tell them, pastor says, you can move to another seat. Um, I'm not going to move. You are going to move. So look at them and tell them, don't choke on the grapes. What did they say? Is that the right neighbor? Oh, there you go. Okay, put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Don't choke on the grapes. You know, most of the events in the book of Numbers took place in the wilderness. The children of Israel had spent 430 years in Egypt as slaves. Now they were transitioning through the wilderness to the promised land. And so when we look at the book of Numbers, it chronicles, it documents that journey through the wilderness. That transition period. It documents their wilderness experience. This is very significant because it does not talk a lot about the highlights of their life. It talks more about the lowlights of their life. It doesn't talk much about the, the mountain side of their life. It talks about the valleys of their life. It talks about their wilderness experience. Why is this important? This is important because if you are in the house today or you are online watching this, you might be going through a difficult situation. You might be going through a painful situation right now. And you're wondering, does God see me? Does God hear me? The book of Numbers lets us know that our pain is not wasted. And God documents your journey. If he can bring you to it, he can bring you through it. Somebody say he will bring you through. If he can bring you to it, he would bring you through it and to it. This is very important. Because now God documents their journey. And it's, it's okay for God to document my journey and record it for his, for his sake. But it's a different ball game when God documents my journey and makes it public. Now we look at the book of Numbers because we have the gift of hindsight. 
So we can sit down on this side of history and say they were so disobedient. You can judge them. You can criticize them. You can dissect their character and say, why did they behave like this? They were so disobedient because their lives were public. But I don't know what you would do if you were in their shoes because your life is not yet public. We live in a day and age where we always like to show our mountaintop experiences and not our valleys. We live in the social media age where you always see the reels with your highlights, but not with your lowlights. You forget that you keep, listen, you keep showing off and showing off all, and there's nothing with accomplishments. But you cannot brag on your accomplishments because it's not by power, it's not by mind, it's by the Spirit of God. And a lot of people are so used to showing off without knowing that as long as you keep showing off, God will not show up in your life. And I, and I, I want to I let you know, I want to challenge you to, that God has been waiting on you to stop bragging on your accomplishments. God has been waiting for you to stop bragging on your accomplishments, on your laurels, on your trophies. God has been waiting for you to stop. Because divine intervention begins when, div when human interruption and interception ends. And you have been delaying God's plan. You have been distracting and disrupting God's purpose because you keep talking about the things that you can do without talking about the thing that God has done in your life. Come on, put a praise in it. As we look at this text... Johnny, as we look at this text, I love this text so much because Israel, they were not where they wanted to be, but they were not yet where they want to be. I get it now. God brought them out of Egypt, but he was still yet to deliver the promised land to them. Watch this. Let me try this again. God delivered them from Egypt, but he was yet to deliver them the promised land. I got it. God is not just in the deliverance ministry. God is in the delivery ministry. Because he's going to deliver you from some things. And he's going to deliver some things to you. Is there anybody in here today that, that can testify? You don't need to tell us everything you went through. But if you ever went through anything that God delivered you from. If you were, you should have been dead, but here you are because God delivered you. You should have been down, but here you are because God delivered you. Do I have anyone in the house that wants to testify? Or do I rely on those online? Do I have anyone in the house that wants to testify and say, God delivered me from something? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Look at your neighbor and tell him, yes, he did. He delivered me. I should have been down, but God delivered me. I should have been out, but God delivered me. I should have been locked up, but God delivered me. I should have been sick, but God delivered me. I should have been homeless, but God delivered me. I should have been restless, but God delivered me. I almost committed suicide, but God delivered me. Do I, do I, do I, do I, do I have anyone in the house? Do I have anyone that God delivered and is about to deliver some things to you? Oh, Jesus. If he delivered you, he will deliver it to you. <laughs> that word is for me. If he delivered you from it, he will deliver you to it. He didn't bring you out. Listen, I want to let you know, wherever you are, that this is not your destination. This is just transition. This Don't make a sleepover out of a stopover. If God has not shown up, the show is not yet over. Talk to me, somebody. Let's go to the text. So, so this passage is loaded because God tells. This passage starts out with God telling Moses. Send some men to spy the land that I'm about to give them. Somebody say spy. Come on, say spy. If you're online, leave the word S-P-Y, spy, spy. Which means to search. To spy the land that I'm about to give them. Which means 
that in order to take possession, you need vision. If your eyes cannot see it, your hands cannot seize it. We talked about the moment of perspective. The Bible says, I will do exceeding, abundantly, above all you can ask or imagine. Hold on. Ask, imagine. God, are you saying that my confession has the same power as my imagination? Could it be possible that your confession has been limited because your imagination let me let me put it this way in, in in basic English most of you have scriptures you have been quoting but you don't have pictures you're seeing you have a lot of scriptures but no pictures and God says you need to spy the land because I I need to give you a glimpse I need to give you an idea I need to give you a picture of what I'm about to do in your life Abraham as far as your eyes can see, I will give to you. Do you know what? I feel faith in the house. Some of you need to go and test drive the car you are believing God for. They don't know how much is in your bank account. Just go in there and say, hey, not that one. No, no, no. The one with the letter seat, the red one. The, yeah, that's the one I want. I'm going to test drive. Just keep going around. You, you, because, and they ask you, what are you doing? You say, I am, I'm just practicing my future. Some of you need to just drive around the neighborhood you want to leave in and go to the model home. They don't even know. How. Just go walk in boldly. There's a swag you have when you, come on. They, they, you just walk in boldly. They don't even know who you are. Some of you need to go to the post oak. And I know you cannot afford it right now. But just go to pass the reception. Just go straight to the lobby. Just walk in there. Cross your legs. And they're not going to ask you who you are because you don't even know who I am. Just, and when they ask you, what are you doing here? I'm, I'm, I'm spying the land. Look at somebody and say, spy the land. Spy the land. Spy the land. Spy the land. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, I can see clearly now. I can see clearly. I can see the baby now. I can see the blessing now. I can see the breakthrough now. I can see clearly now. Somebody said, yes. I can see. I can see. God wants to replace your eyesight with insight. You have eyesight. But God says eyesight is not enough. Because blindness is not just when you cannot see what is in front of you. Blindness is when you cannot see what God has for you. And some of you have eyesight without insight. Touch your name and tell them, is your vision clear? W what did they say? Oh, it looks like some of you are sitting beside people that are blind. Look, at, look for another neighbor, a neighbor that can see and tell them, what, what, what do you see? What do you see? Do you see your promise or do you see the problem? What do you see? Do you see the prop? Do you see your purpose? What do you see? Do you see the breakthrough? Do you see what God planned for you? If you don't see it, then you need to spy the land. Somebody say spy. Woo. Spy the land. When you look at this text, at face value, you may think that spying the land was God's idea. Because it starts out by God saying, go and spy the land. And you can say, oh, that was God's decision and directive. But no, 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 no. The truth is that God already spied the land for them. You got to follow me now. Follow me now. I know we've been shouting. And, but listen, listen, listen. God spied the land for them. I'm going to say, Pastor Rema, give me Bible proof. I got Bible for you. Ezekiel 26. I got Bible for you. Look at this. The Bible says, on that day, this is God speaking. I raised my hand in an oath to them. To bring them out of the land of Egypt into a land that 
I had searched. Flowing with me Hold on a second. Are you saying that you spy the land also? Yes. And he factored in the giants? Yes. So what is going on here? It seems to me like spying the land was not God's original idea. That it was the people's idea. I got Bible for you. Deuteronomy 1.21. We're in church. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you understanding this. It says, this is, this is Moses' explanation of what happened in our text. You got you to look at this Bible thing in context because it's very important. Moses was describing our text in Deuteronomy. It says, look, the Lord your God has set the land before you. It says, go and spy it. No. Go and possess it as the Lord God of your fathers has spoken. Verse 22. Look at what Moses said. And every one of you came near to me <laughs> and said, let us send men before us. Let them search the land for us and bring back word. Look at, I, I wanted to just cuss Moses out there. I'm in church. <laughs> Verse 23, the leader, Moses said, hmm, the plan pleased me so well. Moses went with that. So now you take this scripture and superimpose it on our text. And you see that when God said go spy the land, it was not God's instruction. It was God's permission. Can I tell you that some of you are leaving in God's permission now when you don't even know it. Let me put it another way so that. You can understand that I'm talking to you, not your neighbor. Sometimes God will answer your prayers. Not because he just wants to respond to your prayers. But because he's responding to your rebellion. Because God will give you what you want to show you that what you want is not what you need. Oh, I'm preaching. I'm preaching. I know I'm preaching. I don't need your, I don't need your response. I can, I can hang out with those online. Listen, some, see, see, God will give you what you need or what you want sometimes to let you know that I'm not just responding to your prayers. I'm responding to your rebellion and disobedience. You want to spy the land? I told you possess the land and now you want to spy the land. Because God knows that when you get to the land, you're going to see the giants. So God says, spy the promise. I'm going to take care of the problem. And Moses says, mm, 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 no, I think it's good. Let's go and spy the land. And God said, okay. You don't want God to say, okay for you. No, 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 we're laughing, but I'm very serious. Because most of you are leaving in God's permissive will when you can be in God's perfect will. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you need to come to a point where you can say, God, not my will, but let your will be done in my life. God, I want this, but is this what you want for me? God, I want this man, but is this the man you want for me? God, I want this woman, but is this, is this the woman you want for me? God, I want to, to make this move, but is this the move you have for me? God, I want to, come on, come on, come on. I want this job, but is this the job you have for me? I want to move to this neighborhood, but is this where you want for me? And some of you have spied the land God told you to possess. Some of you are spying what God told you to possess. Possess the land. This is important. Stocky, this is important because every door that opens is not an open door. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move on. So, 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 so we see in the text because we got to get into the text. I, I promise you it's so rich. And we look at Moses. I started this and I think that part of the reason the children of Israel were very up and down, up and down, was partly because of Moses. I looked at Moses. He just told us, oh, 
That's a good idea. Come on, you are the leader. Hear from God. You don't hear from them. You hear from God and execute. We see Moses being extra. We see Moses being, being emotional. We see Moses being erratic. Moses comes down from the mountain and sees them worshiping, and he broke the Ten Commandments. Moses, can you speak to the no, no can you can you can you speak to the rock? He strikes the rock. What is what's happening, Moses? <laughs> Look at the text. God told Moses to spy the land. Watch this. He said to the spies, verse 20, if you can pull up verse 20, Numbers 13, verse 20. And Moses, Mo, 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 Mo. Oh, Mo, Mo, come, 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 Mo. God said, spy the land. And God had told us that the land is good already in different places of the scripture. Moses tells them, go check if the land is rich or poor. Where did the poor come from? Good or bad? Where did the bad come from? Moses, why are you adding to what God said? God never said good or bad. God said the land is good. Write this down. Wherever you are, write this down. Whenever, are you ready for this? No, which section is ready? Are you ready for this? Okay. I just wanted to be sure I'm, I'm speaking to the right, the right church. Whenever you have a discussion about what God has already made a decision, you end up in destruction. Whenever you have a discussion about what God has already made a decision about, you end up in destruction. When God takes a position, don't add your opinion. God said the land is good, go and possess. Moses said the land might be good or bad, let's spy it. To make matters worse, Moses makes it worse. God said, Lonnie, God said, spy the land, period. Moses says, spy the land, comma, and the people. God says, spy the land, period. Moses says, spy the land, comma, um, the people, the this, the that. The, God said, just spy the land, period. I will take care of the people. The reason I'm saying this is that a lot of people are like Moses and you cannot enter into your promised land thinking like a Moses. Whenever you add to what God has said, you subtract from what God is about to give you. Whenever you add to what God has said, that's why Moses never made it to the promised land. I'm trying to help you to get into your promise. I'm trying to help you. Spy the promise, not the problem. Some of you have been spying the wrong things. Do you know, Keith, Keith, do you know that I, I did an, a little analysis. They spent one verse, one, talking about how good the land was. Verse 27, the land is good. The fruits are nice. But they spent three verses, verse 28, verse 29, and 31, talking about how bad it was. We cannot go into the promised land. Oh my God, we saw the Anak. Who, 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 saw, who sent you to see the Anak? We're laughing about this, but I have a message for you. How long is your testimony? The Bible says, bless the Lord at all times. Oh my goodness, goodness. All times. Somebody say all times. Your testimony should be so long and so much that you have no time to rehearse your problems. No, you didn't hear what I said. 
Because some of you have more problems than you have testimonies. I want to look for the testimony section. The Bible says, bless the Lord at all times. At all times. Not sometimes. At all times. It doesn't matter what you're going through. In every situation, the Bible says, give him praise. Give him thanks. I wonder if I have anyone in the house that wants to just say, I know I have problems, but my testimony is more than my come on come on come on it's more than my problems i'm gonna give you 10 seconds 20 seconds open up your mouth your neighbor cannot do this for you you gotta do this for yourself if god has been good to you open up your mouth he healed my body he set me on the solid rock i should have been dead but look at me now somebody said yeah Where are my testifiers? Where are my testifiers? I know you got some problems, but do you have any testimony? Do you have any testimony? If you have a testimony, give your neighbor a high five and tell them God has been good. Tell them God has been good. Look for another neighbor and tell them God has been better than good. Now open up your mouth and give him the biggest shout in the house. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I can hear you. Testify, magnify, glorify. Anybody, somebody, everybody, give Jesus the biggest shout. You are sitting beside someone that doesn't know how to testify. Tell them, excuse me, excuse me. God has blown my mind. I can't sit down. God has set me free. He delivered me. He saved me. He changed me. He changed me. Let the redeemed of the Lord stand Says so. Says so. you can sit down when you're praising you God does not need undercover worshipers you cannot be a secret agent praiser God is looking for worshipers God is looking for those that are radical God is looking for those that will shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph I will not outsource my praise I will not let the rocks cry Wherever you are watching this online, just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for shutting the doors. Thank you, Jesus, for opening the doors. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how I made it without a salary. I don't know how I made it with, I almost lost my, but look at me. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. I know I have some problems, but I still have a praise. I know I have some struggles, but I still have a song. I know I have some tests, but I got a testimony. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. I feel power in this place. Give your neighbor a hype and tell them it's not my fault. He just blessed me. It's not my fault. He just saved me. It's not my fault. Oh, Jesus. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. I am the redeemed of the Lord. And the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. It's not my fault. I got to say so. I got to jump so. I got to shout.
Some of you don't know that your sound is a battle strategy. You don't even know your voice is a battle strategy. You've been praying. You've been fasting. You've been sowing. All you need to do is to open up your mouth and praise God. You are not too big to give the big God a praise. Let's sit down, sit down. They got to the land. Whew. When they got to the land, they saw that in the land, the land was good and fertile. And it took two men to carry the grapes. Think about that. Two men to carry the grapes. The grapes are very significant. It symbolizes a taste, a glint, a foretaste, an appetizer, a sampler of God's blessing in your life. <laughs> I hear the Spirit of God tell me to t listen. Some of you think you're in your promised land. You're just in your grape season. I received that money. There's a wallet in my pocket. Get me, get me, get me something. I got to sow this into this. Some of you think you are in your promised land. If it's not in my, just run to my car and get it. Some of you think you are in your promised land without knowing you are in your grape season. Can I, can I say something that would shock you? <laughs> the type of, oh my goodness. Let me repeat that again. Some of you didn't hear it. You were, you were messing with those grapes and all of this. And you, yes, I know you were making six, fig, six figures, but there's still more. Yes, I know you're the first in your, in your, in your family to graduate, but you're still more. Yes, I know you've paid off your house and your car and everything. But there's still more. This is just grapes. Look at someone and say, it's just grapes. Grapes. It's just the beginning. It's just an introduction. Stop tripping. Stop bragging. This is just grapes. Took two people to carry this blessing. The blessing God has for you is so big for you, you would need people to help you with. The blessing God has for you is so big, you would need people to carry it for you. Come on, Lonnie, give me that. The blessing God has for you is so big, you would need people to carry it for you. The breakthrough God has for you, I'm telling you, is so big, you would need assistance. Some of you are here in my, you're going to need a CPA. Not because you can't do your taxes, but it's just so complex. You have multiple LLCs. God is about to bless you. You, you, you need to hire a lawyer, an accountant, you, because the blessing is going to be so big. It's going to be so heavy. You cannot do it on your own. Who did I speak into? Who am I speaking to today? I received that. This is just your grape season. This is just the beginning. I know you are living in abundance, but God says I can do exceedingly. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. Somebody say good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. Woo. 40 years. They eat manna. And quail. Think about this. And now they see two men coming with grapes. You've been eating manna for 40 years. And quail. And all of this. And now you see two people coming with grapes. God said to tell you. I'm about to do. I know this sounds so basic. Lana, give me one more. Please. I know this sounds so basic. I'm just doing it prophetically. And I'm telling you, when you see me, I'm not, the next time you see me, I'm not going to be in the wilderness. I'm going to be in the promised land. That's why I'm sowing into it because you cannot shout about everything. You got to sow into some things. I'm telling you, God is saying the next thing he's going to do in your life is going to be big. It's going to be new. God says, I'm about to do something new in your life. I'm about to break the routine. 
I'm about to break the pattern in your life. It's about to be big. God is about to blow your mind. God is about to shock you. Good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. Who did I come to speak to today? I got to sow into it. I got to sow into it. This is your season of breakthrough. God says, I'm about to change your mind. I'm about to change your life. I'm about to change your association. I'm about to change your circle. I'm about to change your life. I'm about to change your mind. I'm about to change your mind. Wherever you are, change is coming. Somebody said, 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 change is coming. Give your neighbor a high five. Tell them change is coming. I sow into my future. I sow into my children. I sow into my promise. I sow into my breakthrough. I sow into it. I, I see change. Someone is out change. Someone is out change. Somebody said B. It's going to be B. Yes. The promotion will be B. Your future will be B. It's going to be B. It's going to be B. That's the power. It's going to be B. I said it's going to be B. It's going to be B. It's going to be B. I don't know what else to tell you but B. I don't know about you, but it's about to be big. When you sow in your wilderness, you reap in the promise. Sit down. About to be big. Brandon, as wonderful, as wonderful as the grapes were, think about it. As wonderful, look at me, as wonderful as the grapes were, that was not God's promise. Listen to me. You better listen to this sermon over and over. You, you talk about manifested promise. I'm telling you how to get into your promise. As big as the grapes were, it was not the promise. Jesus. The enemy wants you to settle for a fruit when God wants to give you a future. Because the grapes were just a proof. God don't want to give you just a proof. God wants to give you a place. God doesn't just want to give you a harvest. God wants to, God wants to give you a home. You've settled for grapes. You're choking on the, Come on. And God says, you are not designed to be a spy. You're designed to be an owner. You keep running around that neighborhood when you're supposed to own the lot. You've reduced yourself to a spy when I called you as an owner. You were just looking at it instead of living in it. Grapes. Look at your neighbor and just nudge them a second and say, don't settle for less. No, 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 you have the wrong neighbor. Look at the other neighbor, tell them, don't settle for less. Don't settle for less. Don't settle for less. I bind every spirit of mediocrity. Don't settle for less. I bind every spirit of, of near success syndrome. Don't settle for less. God has more. God has more. There's more than the grapes you see. There's more than the grapes you taste. There's more, there's more, there's more. Don't settle. Don't settle for being used and abused when you can be loved. Don't settle for manipulation as a leader when you can have a vision people will submit to. Don't settle for looking rich when you can be debt free. Don't 
don't settle for looking happy on social media when you're suicidal and depressed. Don't settle for looking like you're a Christian when you don't have the power of the Holy Ghost on your inside. The Bible says you have a form of godliness, but you deny the power thereof. Look at somebody say, don't settle, don't settle, don't settle. This is transition. Come on, I got to go. Look, look. They, they saw the graves, but the other thing they saw was they saw the giants. Everybody say the giants. <laughs> I love this. They saw the giants. The giants. The grapes. The giants. The grapes. Melbourne. The grapes. The giants. The grapes and giant. So you mean that where the grapes are, that's where the giants are? It seems like anytime God gives us grapes, the enemy always shows up as a giant to attack. The, the, the grapes are the promises and the giants are the problems. It seems like whenever there's a promotion, somehow there's an opposition. It, it seems that's why they're attacking you at work because you have been called. They're picking you because God picked you. That's why you're going through what you're going through. Look, look, at, look at my life. I'm, I'm seeing positive changes, but there's still a challenge. I, I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing success, but there's still a struggle. That's why you're going through what you're going through at work. Nothing is wrong with you. Everything is right with you. You are chosen. You are picked. You are called. You are different. That's why God called you. Come on. David, anointed as king, grapes. David about to be killed by Goliath, giants. Joshua, or Joseph rather, has a dream about him being a ruler. Grapes, ooh, I had a dream. The next thing, he's in the pit, giants. Mary, oh my goodness, I'm going to be the mother of our Lord Jesus. Grapes and butterflies in your in her belly. I'm so excited. The next thing, the one who killed the baby. Elijah calling down fire from heaven. Grapes. All of a sudden, he's scared of Jezebel. She wants to kill him. Giants. I'm talking to you today. I'm coming for you. I was talking with Dom and, and Lonnie, and I was talking to them, and I said, Do you have giants where the grapes are? And God smiled and told me, because sometimes my people have no vision. I have to make the signpost so big. Because the giants are not there to kill you. They are there to show you where your grapes are. Some of you will not know where your promise is if you don't have a giant signpost. So here you are. Intimidated by the giants without knowing the giant is intimidated by the size of your God. Grapes. And giants. Oh my goodness. I looked at this. And God told me. Tell them your promise is always occupied. It's not vacant. Let me tell you guys a story. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost here. I was flying the other day and I was running to get to the, to catch, to, to get to the plane. And eventually I made it. And as I got there, I was panting. And I looked at my seat number. I looked at the seat number 2A. Okay. I get in there and I see someone sitting in 2A. Listen, I'm not just black, I'm African. And the Holy Ghost came up. I'm just joking. So, so, so I told him, sir, I think you have the wrong seat. I said it with the Holy Ghost. And he said, no. I said, oh. I felt the Holy Ghost say something here. And the unholy ghost say, I'm just joking. I said, sir, no, I, I really do believe you have my, 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 you were sitting in my seat. He said, no, and now, you know, I've been running. You know how you've been running? I'm like, you were sitting in my seat. He said, no. So all I needed to do was just, I just pulled my ticket. I said, sir, this is my name, Rayma Ehemere, 2A. Sir, 
This is 2A. Stand up. So he stood up. And God said he was just a placeholder. Woo! Can I tell you something? Don't let a placeholder take your place. It's your place! Come on, open up your mouth. Give Jesus 10 seconds of praise here. Give him 10 seconds of praise. Let a placeholder take your place. Do you know? Do you know? All I needed to do was flash my ticket. I told him, sir, this is my seat. You cannot have it. Every time the enemy looks at you and sits on your children, I'm coming, and sits on your business, and sits on your family, and sits on your mind and sits on your job and sits on everything that you have tell him hold on a second um the bible says that i'm seated far above excuse me um you have the wrong seat can you stand up get up up come on get out of this seat because this seat belongs to me you are in the wrong seat look at someone and tell him get him out of here the giants are not there to kill you. They are there to show you. Because some of you don't have vision to see that it's your promise. Sit down. Sit down. Somebody say giants. Oh my goodness. Do you know? Do you know that David killed a giant? Stalking. What that means is that you don't have to be big to be a giant. What that means is that you, a giant is big, but you can be a champion and be small. You don't have to be a giant to be a champion. You don't have to be a giant to be a victor. And by the way, do you know that giantism and being a giant is actually a deformity? So here you are. Yes, it is. I know some people are going to be Googling it right now. It's produced for the educational people by the overproduction of growth hormones. That is, that is physically, but spiritually. Hold on. The sons of Anak were actually from Nephilim, which are fallen angels. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Fallen angels? Oh. Fallen angels? Do you know what their new name is? Demons. So, so even if there were angels that were not fallen, you still had authority over them. Because you were seated far with God. And angels, the Bible tells us, I believe in the book of Hebrews, they have been sent as ministering spirits for you. So let's assume that they were from angels. You still have authority over them. Now the Bible tells you that they are not even from angels. That they are from demons, fallen angels. And you're still scared of it? The enemy that you were scared of is scared of you. You're looking at how big your enemy is. Your enemy is looking at how big your God is. So do you know the only disadvantage you have over a giant is your physical appearance? A giant might have the height, but he doesn't have the heart. A giant might have the size, but he doesn't have the substance. Do you know that be being a giant is not, a giant is not just a person. A giant is a philosophy. A giant is when you cover up your spiritual deficiencies, watch this, watch this, with physical deformities. Some of you are living giant lives because you have learned how to cover up your spiritual deficiencies with physical deformities. Do you know as, as big 
as God is, he never calls himself a giant. <laughs> Woo! I'm having fun all by myself here. Jesus even showed up as a baby. The heaven is his throne. The earth is his full stool. And he shows up as a baby, not a giant. Because the only advantage a giant has over you is physical. And you're scared of the giant. Think, think, think about it. You're scared of the giant? <laughs> oh boy. I have so much. We got to go to grasshoppers. Let's go to grasshoppers. The next point is grasshoppers. Because it's, it's one thing to look at the grapes. The founder grapes better found a giant. But the big thing here is the grasshoppers. They saw themselves, oh my goodness, as grasshoppers. What? You see yourself as a grasshopper? He sent 12 spies. 10 of the spies come back with a battle report. And two of the spies says, no, we can do this. And I want to understand that a grasshopper mentality is going to make you confuse inferiority complex with humility. A lot of you think you are humble. You're just inferior and you have a grasshopper mentality. Oh, no, I, I cannot afford. No, I cannot afford. Who said? The Bible says he will supply all your needs, not according to your bank account, but according to his Riches. Oh no, I can't afford it. It's not possible. I can't have the business now. I've done. Who said? It's not by power nor by mind, but by my spirit. Why are you playing my role? Spy the land. I'll take care of the problems. How you see yourself is as powerful as how God sees you. God says you're blessed. Do you think you're blessed? What God says doesn't even matter anymore. It's what you say to you. God says you are blessed, you are chosen, you are rich, you are this. Do you believe it? Now, God believes it, but the question is, do you believe it? Because a lot of people have come short of the promise because of their mentality. Because your mentality is your reality. That's why this month is a month of perspective. How far can you see? I like what C.S. Lewis said. He said, humility, watch this, is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking less of yourself. Or thinking of yourself less. Because there is a difference. You cannot have a positive life and a negative mind. I know I'm making sense because you are so quiet. I'm coming for you. You cannot. And God is calling us to a place, to a land that is flowing with milk and honey. God, you showed me the grace, but you didn't show me the giants. Yes, because faith is holding on to what God said. Even when you see what God did not say. Faith. It's holding on to what God said. When you begin to see the dot, the scan, the doctor, the letter, all of that. Even when you begin to see what God did not say. I see the giants, but I will focus on the grapes. I refuse to spy the giants. I'm going to spy the land. I'm going to focus on what God said. Do you know that it's one thing for you to say, I'm a grasshopper. That's fine. But now you say, they see us also as grasshoppers. Hold on a second. One is perception. The other is assumption. How fear? Oh my goodness. Do you know the danger of fear? The danger of fear is that fear makes you feel that you are delivered when you're just free. Let me, let me rephrase it so you can understand. The children of Israel left Egypt, were in the wilderness, and were headed to the promised land. When you see them, or if you have seen them coming out of, of Egypt, you would have said they are what? Free. Somebody say free. They get to the wilderness. 
And as they get to the wilderness, they begin to say, give us this and give us that and complain and murmur and grumble and do all of these things. And God told me, the danger of freedom, watch this. The danger of freedom is that it appears as deliverance till it's tested by giants. Some of you think you are delivered because you have come out of Egypt, but Egypt has not come out of you. You've left the man, but the man has not left you. It's called soul ties. Let me not go there. Let me just stay here. Joshua and Caleb, where are you at? Joshua said, shut up. No. I refuse to let you call me a grasshopper. Listen, don't allow people with vision problems make you feel like you are the problem. You keep taking instructions. Oh, my goodness gracious. You keep taking instructions from people that have a vision problem. Baby, there's nothing wrong with you. There's something wrong with your eyes. They cannot see. They have eyesight, but they don't have insight. Look at your neighbor and tell them, if you only knew who you were sitting beside. Oh, no, look, look at, they, they are a suspect. Look, at, look for another person. Tell them, if you only knew who you were sitting beside. I'm not a grasshopper. I am royalty. I'm not a grasshopper. I am approved. I'm not a grasshopper. I am accepted. I am powerful. I'm not hopeless. I have help. Somebody shout yes. <laughs> I got to get you guys out of here, but let me say some things about grasshoppers. No, you don't want to tell an African preacher to take his time. Those online watching like, yeah, take your time. But you're like, um, we got to go to Papa Do's and um, we got to order the chip. No, 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 hold on a second. I don't know how you read your Bible, but when I read my Bible, I ask myself, why not? Because the Bible will never answer questions if you don't, if the Bible never give you answers, if you never ask questions. That's how I read the Bible. I come with questions. Why? Why grasshopper? Do you know how many animals and insects exist? Why grasshopper? Why not rat? I mean, that's how I think. I mean, why not dogs and cats and, and flies and mosquitoes? Why, why not? Why not? Why grasshopper? Oh, my goodness. I shouldn't have gotten into this study. Grasshoppers, Officer Coleman, grasshoppers have incomplete metamorphosis. You got to work with me here. What this means is that their life cycle has three stages instead of four. So they are not completely mature. Put that on the back burner and let's look at this. Grasshoppers have wing. But they decide and choose to hop. Leaving beyond below your capacity. You can fly, but I choose to, to hop. Okay, so let's bring this here. So you are immature and you are inconsistent. So on one hand, their maturity is incomplete. And on the other hand, their movement is inconsistent. Always hopping around. I can tell your level of maturity by your movements. The way to diagnose insecurity is through inconsistency. Write it down, write it down, write it down. The way to diagnose insecurity sometimes is through, is, is, is through inconsistency. The Bible lets us know that a double-minded man, James chapter 1 verse 6 through 8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let that man not think he will receive anything from God. God is saying when you keep hopping around, I ain't going to give you anything. When you keep hopping from business to business, from relationship to relationship, from job to job, God says, stay with the plan. You're feeling insecure, so you're inconsistent. Moving to the next thing because you don't want to feel left out. Some 
stay with the plan. Hopping around. Hop. You can fly. Now, let me, let me hop around. You come to church when you want to come to. You go to work when you want to. No. God has created you to fly, but you want to stay on the grass level and hop. Another, another thing about the grasshopper, as I wrap this up, is that I, I promise you, I, I googled it. So, so you don't have to try to google it. Grasshoppers have their ear in their abdomen, in their belly. Yeah, I saw somebody do. Grasshoppers have their ears. In their, what does that mean, Pastor Rima? I'm glad you asked. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. So you have substituted your agency of faith for your appetite. Huh. That makes sense. That's why all through the wilderness, the children of Israel, they substituted God's agenda and God's assignment for their appetite. They were always asking God for manner. God give us manner. God give us flesh. God give us garlic. If I, let's go back to Egypt where we were eating garlic and manna. They wanted to go back because of their appetite, not because of God's agenda. Because their ears were in their belly. Somebody say grasshopper. Last thing I want to show you about grasshoppers is that they are very highly individualistic. They, they go on their own. Don't touch me. Stay on your side. I stay on my side. God bless you. God bless you. They are very solitary. They are very individualistic. So when they said we see ourselves as grasshoppers, what they were saying is... Um, we are not, I know we see us coming together, but we are not actually united. We are not actually together. We are not actually one. We are actually divided. And God showed me that it took two people to carry the grapes. But it took two people to have a good report. Joshua and Caleb. For the next season of your life, I need you to understand that your agreement is very important. Psalms 133 verse 1 through 3. I'm not going to read it, but the Bible says, Behold how good and pleasing it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. Now, this is the, the part I like. It says, For there God commands his blessing. What if I told you your blessing was connected to your unity? Yes, I know you were a Caleb, but where is your Joshua? Are you a grasshopper? You want to do it alone? I'm telling you for the, the next season, God is calling you into. The enemy doesn't want to attack your assignment. He attacks your agreement. He knows you are anointed, but the question is, are you connected? The enemy will rather you have uniformity than unity. Because uniformity means we're all doing the same thing. Unity means we are alike, but we can still work together. And most of you cannot stand People being different from you. You just get on my last nerve. You, you. But God is calling you to a place where you need to be unified. The devil never attacked Adam till there was an Eve. I'm telling you that if the enemy wants to isolate you, he if he wants to eliminate you, rather, he begins by isolating you. He pushes you apart. Somebody say, God has called me. No, no, no. I know you have been set apart, but you don't have to stay apart. You are a Joshua, but do you have a Caleb? And I'm telling you, look at your neighbor and tell them, are you my Caleb? Are you my Caleb? Are you my Joshua? Are you my Caleb? Because my blessing is tied to you somehow. 
I know you don't want it, but united we stand and divided we fall. My, my life somehow is connected to you. My healing is in my connection. My breakthrough is in my connection. My blessing is in my connection. I'm going to permit you for the next 10 seconds, look for your Jacob, look for your Joshua, look for your Caleb. If you are sitting beside someone that is not your Joshua, I permit you to look for somebody else and tell them, I, I don't want to deal or hang out with the 10 spies. I'm looking for for my Joshua and Caleb. Looking for my Joshua. I'm looking for my Joshua. Look at your neighbor and tell them, are you my Joshua? Are you my Caleb? Because in this next season, I cannot afford bitterness. Shake your hand. Shake. Look for somebody and say, I cannot afford bitterness in this next season. Look at your neighbor, the one that has not spoken to you all morning tell them i cannot i cannot afford bitterness i cannot afford unforgiveness in this season of my life i've come too far i've come too far i can see the promised land i've come too far i cannot afford envy i cannot afford unforgiveness i cannot afford it my healing is a stake my breakthrough is a stake my blessing is a stake my testimony is a stake my i cannot afford where are the caleb's and where are the where are the Caleb's and the Joshua's? Before we go, I wanted to look at your neighbor one more time. Tell him I promise you this might be the last time I'm going to look at you. But I have something for you. I have something for you. I've got something for you. Look at them. Look at them and tell them I know you were facing a giant. Look at them. Say I know you were facing a giant. But good news. The giant is facing the giant killer. Oh! Tell him the giant doesn't know that you are a giant killer. If you are a giant killer in the house, open up your, open up your mouth and give Jesus the biggest sound. Come on, come on. All the giant killers, all the giant killers, give a giant praise, give a big shout. I'm a giant killer. I'm a sickness killer. It stops with me. It stops with me. It stops with me. I'm gonna kill the giant. I'm gonna kill generational curses. It stops here. Kill it. 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 Yes. For the next 10 seconds, look at every giant in your life. Think about every giant in your life. And I want you to call yourself. And if you know you were a giant killer, give God the biggest shout. Oh no. No. That's not how giant killers worship. That's not how giant killers shout. That's not how giant killers scream. Give God a praise. Come on. Come on. I feel the giants fall. Come on. I feel the chains breaking. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Bring it. Bring it, giants. Giants do fall. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. All the giants are coming down. Giants of insecurity down. Giants of sickness down. Giants of generational curses down. Giants of manipulation down. Giant of addiction, down. Giant of litigation, down. It's coming down. Have you never tell him it's coming down? It's coming down. It's coming down. I can hear it. The sound of abundance. It's coming down. It's coming down. The giants are coming down because I am a giant killer. I say I'm a giant killer. I know you're a giant, but I'm a giant killer. I know you're a 
a giant, but I'm a giant killer. I'm going to take you out in a second. settle for being a giant when you can be a giant killer. Every giant. Every giant. Every giant. Wherever you're watching this from. Every giant. Every giant. Giant of fear. Giant of addiction. Giant of sexual promiscuity, all of that, all of that. Giant of disappointments and heartbreaks. All the giants. Here you are. Listen, you don't have to be a giant to be a giant killer. That's all I'm telling you today. You don't have to be a giant to be a giant killer. I prayed this morning on my prayer work and I said, God, I don't want the people to come here and shout and scream and hump. I want them to come scream and fly. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength waiting in the wilderness waiting in fear they shall mount up wings like eagles I'm an eagle I'm not a grasshopper I'm going to fly above pain fly above despair fly above insecurity Fly above what my father did and what my mother did and what my uncle did and what my sister did and fly, fly above all of that. Fly above who walked out on me without letting me know. Fly above what they're doing currently to me at work and I know someone is watching this. And you're asking why? Why me? The question is why not you? If you were picked, God would never give you much more than you can bear. Don't choke on the grapes. It's just a, it's just a preview, a, a foretaste of what God can and will do in your life. Every now and then, I would, I would buy stuff for my, for my little daughter. My son is not an eater, so you can't tempt him with food. My daughters, they can eat everything and anything. No allergies. They just eat everything. I gave my little daughter, two-year-old. I gave her some grapes. And I said, hey, Abby, can you give me some grapes? No. Nope. That is choking on the grapes when I can give you more. I am the garden. You have just the grapes. I am the vineyard and you are the grapes. Why settle for the grapes when you can have the... I'm telling you there is so much more God wants to do in your life. Greater is coming. Catch the hand of your neighbor. Just, just squeeze it tight and tell them greater is coming. I, I wish I can lay hands on everybody, but I can't. But just squeeze the hand of your brother, your sister, and tell them greater is coming. Greater is coming. Greater is coming. You know how I know that greater is coming? Because the Bible says greater is he. It happens inside first before it happens outside. For the reason and how I know that greater is coming. Is because greater is here. Greater is not just an event. Greater is a person. And his name is Jesus. If you're here today. And you know, you want to say. That word resonated with me. And you want to say. I have, I've been wanting greater, but I don't have greater on my inside. And I've been stuck with just grapes. Wherever you are online, 
if you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, wherever you are, I'm going to make two calls. The first is, if you want to make Jesus the Lord of, of your life, and you want to experience greater than just grapes, wherever you are, come and meet me here. I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to pray with you. Jesus, Jesus, come on. Put your hands together. Greater is coming. That's it. That's it. That's it. You're coming out from wherever you are. If you are online, come and leave it in the chat. Greater is coming. Let us know how you want to be connected and we want to connect with you. Wherever you are, come on. Come on, Lighthouse. You can do better than that. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I want Jesus. I want to rededicate my life to you. That's the first second is if you are here today and you know you've given your life to Jesus you've been coming to Lighthouse or this is the first time you've come to Lighthouse and you want to say you know what this word resonates with me but I want to be a part of what God is doing and remember what I said for this new season and next season you cannot do it alone you need to be connected everything and anything that is working is connected and if you're here today and you want to be connected to what God is doing in this church lighthouse wherever you are you want to become a member you want to be with us you want to know how what we're doing and you want to stay updated whatever it is you want to be connected to this family if you are online you can leave it in the chat and just say i want to be connected i want to be connected if you are here i am going to touch you pray with you agree with you and you want to be connected to what god is doing in this body wherever you are wherever you are come and meet me here come come and meet me here wherever you are you want to be connected come on put your hands together wherever you are I want to be connected to what God is doing here. I want to be a part of what God is doing here. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you, wherever you are. If you are in line, if you're in the house, you want to be a part of what God is doing in this place. Greater is coming. I don't want to just settle on grapes when I can have more. You're going to see, you're going to see people with the signs that says connect with us. I'm going to pray with each and every one of you. You want to connect to what God is doing here? You want to give your life to Christ? Just follow the, the men and women with these signs and I'm going to pray with you after the service. I'm going to meet you at the back. I'm going to pray with you. Personally going to be there. Pray with you. Have a conversation with you. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. It's time for us to give. I'm going to, I'm going to share something. I want to share something very quickly. I don't want us to just give today because it's what we do. I was really praying about it today and God said to tell you that the grapes are fruit. But I want to give you seed. The Bible says he gives seed to the sower, not fruit to the sower. Some of you have been choking on, this, on the fruits God has given you. And you've not been able to release the seeds that God has given you. Let me, let me share something that happened last week. Last week, while we were at the North Campus and Pastor was doing the offering and Pastor shared and he said, I want you to give and all of that. And I, I felt a pull. And he preached on the Holy Spirit. He will bring you through. And I wanted to give my usual, you know, everybody has that usual offering you always give. Come on, laugh. I know, I know you have the usual offering. Yeah. And I wanted to do that. And, and God asked me, do you want the usual week? God said, do you want the usual blessing? Do you want the usual breakthrough? And I said, absolutely not. He said, so why are you giving me a usual seed? And he said, do you know that when you give me, you don't really give to me, you give to you. The reason we don't give is because we think we're giving away without knowing you're giving to your future. Saturday, I was preparing for this message. And I challenged God. You know how you challenge God? He said, God, you see, I gave more. And I had a usual week. Saturday. I was sounding like Moses. You know what happened? All of a sudden, ding, 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 cash out. Ding, ding. Just like that. I said, wow, this, this thing really works. So some of you are seeing me here giving. And you thought it was just a... I was trying to give. No, I ain't get, I'm not trying to get you to give. I'm trying to get to the next level. Because I, I have an evidence. I have a proof 
giving works. There are some things you cannot text. There are some things you cannot pray out. What if, what if you told God, God, you know, I'm full of sin. And God says, don't worry, I'll pray for you. No, he gave his only begotten son. He didn't pray him. He gave him. You were choking on the blessing because you don't understand there is more. All of a sudden, I began to get a lot on my phone. I decree and declare that this offering you're about to give will be the least you've ever given. I want you to understand that God meets you at your level of faith. If you want the usual week, give God a usual offering. But if you want something unusual, give, give God something unusual. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Let's, 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 let's have our gifts. We're going to make our declaration and confession. If you want to give to the Lighthouse, if you're in-house Lighthouse South, all the details you need is on the screen to give to Lighthouse South. If you're watching online, you can give through Give Lefar. You have all the information to give. If you're watching at the, the West Campus, you have all the information also to give to the West Campus or the Southeast Campus, whatever campus you're watching this from. Please give to the different campuses that you're connected to. Wherever you are, I want to do our declaration. Do you have it up on the screen or do you want me to memorize it? Yeah. Let's see if I can do it, right? As I move towards greatness. As I move towards greatness. Greater. Oh, maybe we should say greatness. I don't know. Okay, let's start with this. As I move towards greater. As I move towards greater. I will accept. I will accept. All divine thoughts. All divine thoughts. Concepts. Concepts. And what? And ideas that will connect me to my destiny. I believe. They are really joking with me today. I've been here waiting for them. I believe, everybody, that what Jesus did for me is bigger than what anyone can and will do to me. And because of his special gift, because of his full gift, wonderful, I will... I will, I will learn to many nations. Somebody say, I will learn to many nations. No, no, no. This is not just a conf confession. This is a reality. Say, I will learn to many nations. This is an unusual week. Say, I will learn to many nations. Do you really believe that? I will learn to many nations. And say, I will borrow from none. Lord, I decree and declare that this seed leaves our hands, but it doesn't leave our life. It will go into our future. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that there's going to be good measure. Press down, shake it together, and run it over. And let us not choke on the fruits when you can give us the seed because we're sowers. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And the people of God say, somebody say, amen. Come on, say amen. I should give to my right to your left. And give someone a hug and tell them I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. I'll see you next week at the North Campus. God bless.